Here's the truth. School didn't teach me how to study. In high school, I was forced to go to class. I was told to handwrite notes and couldn't bring a laptop. Not that I had one, but still. Then, in college, suddenly everything moved digitally, and learning became self-directed. But I didn't realize I had to adapt, so I kept studying like I did in high school. Needless to say, my first semester didn't go so well. Although I was studying long hours, it didn't pay off. And on top of that, my life was a mess. Last night's dinner ruminating on the kitchen counter, dirty underwear dangling from my ceiling fan. How did I even get there? I was miserable, my grades were miserable, and I wasn't having fun. This was not how college was supposed to be. So what did I do? I wiped my memory card. Everything I thought I knew about learning. It was time to rebuild my entire approach to school. And no, this change didn't occur overnight. It took six years of reinvention before I finally developed a system that fit my lifestyle. Now, it might not fit yours, but I wanna share two potentially unpopular ideas that worked wonders for me and how you can apply them in your own life. First, I stopped attending lecture. The problem with class is that you have one professor who understands material a certain way, lecturing 300 students who all learn at different speeds. Front row Jimmy's locked in and keeping up. I'm somewhere chasing shadows around the corner, and Karen's just lost in the woods. But if I fell far enough behind, it was impossible for me to catch back up, and then I would just stop paying attention and start daydreaming for the rest of the hour. Now, I know we're always told there's no such thing as dumb questions, but I'm pretty sure everyone got tired of me asking, Yeah, so can you explain all of that again in a way that I can understand, please? Plus, huge classrooms are terrible learning environments for me. There are way too many distractions. I remember one of my buddies would always come to class and watch anime. And as much as I tried to resist the urge, before I knew it, I'd have one of his earbuds in and we'd be geeking out in the back of the classroom. But if it wasn't him, it was the kid in front of me who was scrolling through Reddit, or the girl who's eating durians in the class and makes it smell like someone took a dump on the floor. Admittedly, I was never someone who could actually pay attention in class, just something about sitting in that cramped seat with a fold-out desk, listening to a lecture on glycolysis just put me right to bed. But instead, give me recorded lectures I could pause and rewind, a cozy desk setup, reliable internet connection, a fresh cup of coffee, and a dope playlist. Oh yeah, I can get to work. It allowed me to approach studying at my own pace free from unnecessary distractions, and remove the pressure of having to keep up with my peers or even the professor. I realized that this was the benefit of self-studying. You have the ability to control your learning environment to study more efficiently. Now, I'm not saying I never watched the lectures. I'm just saying I didn't go to lecture. There's a difference. Now that things have mostly moved virtually, most professors will record their lectures for your viewing pleasure. Instead, I would struggle through the material first on my own, using a very systematic approach, which I'll cover later in this video, and then I'd rewatch the lectures once I had a better understanding of what they were going to be about. And only if I was completely stumped and had no idea what was going on, or I wanted some brownie points with the professor, would I attend office hours for more one-on-one -on -one coaching. So next, I want to talk about what I actually do when I self-study. The main point here is, I don't take notes. Get that out of here. I never take notes. I only make flashcards in Remnant. When I was in high school, I took this US history class where the daily homework assignment was to take handwritten notes so we can reread them to study for the exam. This took several hours every afternoon. And although it ended up with beautiful notes, they weren't very useful. And a lot of times I never even reviewed them again. Of course, I didn't know this at the time, but rereading is actually one of the least effective study strategies because it amplifies something called the Dunning-Kruger effect. This happens when we believe we're much smarter than we actually are based on poor self-awareness of the situation. Basically, rereading my notes made me feel like I understood the information, but when put to the test, I wasn't able to recall anything. Just think of the last book you read, or the last TED talk you watched. You probably left with a feeling of awe and wonderment and might have wanted to start a nonprofit, but if I asked you to recite the main thesis and arguments, could you? I definitely couldn't. Instead, I use a modified version of SQ3R, which Mike and I revamped to employ evidence-based practices. It stands for skim, question, rephrase, recall, and repetition. I first skim through the lecture or chapter and jot down any of the bolded terms or definitions to form an outline of what I'm going to go through. This serves as the skeleton for all of my flashcards. Then I'll go back to the beginning and start the next step, rephrase. 
This is also called the teachback method or the Feynman technique. After going through a section, I'll pause and I'll teach back the main ideas or topics at the fifth grade level. If I can explain something to a fifth grader, that means that I actually have a deep understanding of the topic. This was a really important realization for me. I used to read chapters and take notes without really knowing what I was writing down, and I'd reread them later to try to just memorize word for word. I was more focused on making these aesthetically beautiful study guides rather than trying to understand the information. And this is a terrible approach because the main objective of learning is to understand, not to memorize. Once I had a good grasp on the material, I would then transfer that information onto my flashcards to recall. Flashcards force us to use active recall to study, one of the best learning strategies. I can't peek at the answers beforehand, unlike if I was rereading my notes where everything's just laid out, I'm not challenging myself to study. And I use Remnote to generate flashcards and organize my thinking because it also combines the next step, spaced repetition. Remnote has a built-in algorithm that spaces out your flashcards at strategic intervals, so the harder topics appear more frequently and the easier topics appear less frequently. That way you're not wasting time studying things you already know well. So after I've generated flashcards for my self-study, now I'll go back and watch the lecture usually at two times speed. Since I already have a good understanding of what the lecture is gonna be about, I'm just using this time to capture any ideas I might have missed and to appreciate how hard Mr. J has worked to improve his public speaking skills. Although flashcards are much less pleasant than just rereading your notes, it's this struggle that actually leads to better learning. Using more cognitive effort leads to better retention. And the Q in the SQ3R just stands for doing tons and tons of practice problems. So now I'm gonna put it all together for you. This is still the system I use to study in medical school right now, but it only works under one condition. The most important factor in determining if your self-study is gonna work is if you set clear goals. When I first started to self-study, I wasted a lot of time trying to figure out what I had to work on next. And I also had a hard time balancing learning new information while continuing to review what I already knew. Clear goals removes any of that stress and anxiety about what to do next. And it also allowed me to fully immerse myself in my studies and fully relax when I was off the clock. So now I map out exactly which new topics I need to learn, how many practice questions I wanna do, which topics I'm gonna review, and how long I'm gonna spend doing each of those things. For example, this Friday, I have my neurology shelf exam. So at the beginning of the week, I set up some daily study goals. Each day, I'll do at least 40 practice questions, review my week areas from the previous day, and obliterate as many of my Remno flashcards as possible. And I'll give myself a rough time frame for how long I wanna spend doing each of these tasks. So while doing practice problems, I'll pull up a Remnote daily document and I'll portal in topics I answered incorrectly and fill in missing details or add important information to improve my flashcards. These are my weak points for the day. Then I'll open yesterday's daily document and study those weak points before going back to my main neurology folder to continue burning through the rest of my flashcard queue. And then tomorrow I'll do the same thing, do more practice questions, write down the weak points for that day, and then study the weak points from yesterday, which would be today. I found this way to be the most reliable and effective way to constantly stay on top of my studies. So ironically, skipping classes and taking no notes actually taught me to be more disciplined and organized to manage my studies. And it helped me set clear boundaries between work time and play time. So those are the two pivotal changes I adopted over the years. At first it felt really uncomfortable to skip class and resist the urge to take notes because I've been so conditioned to do that since high school. But over time, I found that taking control of self-directed learning got me better grades and actually brought me to a happier place overall. So I hope that my experiences provide a new perspective so you can avoid some of the mistakes that I've made. If you wanna chat or just shower me with compliments, I'd love to connect. So definitely give us a follow on Instagram or on Twitter and send us a DM. And I will see you guys next time.